If you guys missed my E55 AMG wagon reveal video, I'll link it down below, but in the first three minutes of that video, I take some random dudes for a ride that claim they make YouTube videos or something, and I show you about $35,000 in repair receipts from the previous owner. Now, many commented that old German cars are crap for needing so much money in repairs, and although some German cars are total garbage, most of these massive repair bills you hear about are simple repairs that you can do yourself at home. And in this video, I'm going to give you the confidence and the basic instruction to do just that. And I have some more bloopers for you in this video as well. Now our first repair was already done by the Mercedes Benz dealership for free on a 15 year old station wagon. And if there's any part of this video that you really pay attention to, make sure it's this one because sometimes Way after the fact, a manufacturer will realize they totally messed up on something and they will offer an extended warranty on that part of the car. This is not a traditional recall like you're thinking. You may not have gotten a letter and in some situations, they will reimburse you if you've already paid for the repair. Let me show you two of these on this car alone. When I bought the wagon, it had a brake warning light on the cluster and that's because this pressure reservoir failed. Mercedes-Benz two years ago out of nowhere offered a 25 year extended warranty with unlimited mileage on the entire brake by wire SBC system. So eventually Mercedes will replace this pump because it will fail. And normally this was a $2,000 repair. If you already paid for it, submit to Mercedes-Benz and you'll get reimbursed. Man, you guys smell that? Yeah, it kind of smells like gasoline in the E55, right? Well, if I bring it to Mercedes-Benz and complain about this, there's a good chance I'm getting an entire new fuel tank, brand new AMG fuel pumps, and brand new fuel sending units, about a $3,000 job done totally for free on a 15-year-old 146,000 mile vehicle. And this was already all done, the fuel tank and the SBC pump on my 17-year-old E55 just a couple years back. So if you just bought your car, maybe it's changed hands a few times, make sure to call the dealership, ask for this report. They don't have to print it for you, but they should be able to give you this information over the phone very easily. And these extended warranties do eventually run out. So make sure to do this sooner than later. In today's video, I'm doing a bunch of brake suspension, driveline and service work to the E55. And of course, all the parts I'll be using today came from FCP Euro and they're all covered by their amazing lifetime warranty. So if you guys need parts for your European car, truck or SUV, definitely check out the link down below. If you're experiencing loose steering or you hear a knocking noise over bumps, worn out suspension bushings could be the culprit. Inspect all your bushings for tear and if they look like mine, they need to be replaced. Going back together is pretty simple. Just match up your cups. You can use the same receiving cup as before, or they do have one that sets the depth pretty much perfectly. So I'll use that one. And I did notice that our old thrust arm bushing is actually a control arm bushing. This is not the proper one for the car. And this is more like it. So I verified with FCP. This is our thrust arm bushing. This is what I'm used to. They are AMG specific. Just make sure the nipple is pointing down so you have the orientation right and that you're installing it on this end. There's a tapered edge to accept the bushing. Once you have this arm down, this whole job should take about 15 minutes. The tool I'm using allows you to replace suspension bushings on the car without the use of a press or the need to replace 
the entire control arm. This can pay for itself after just one use, and I'll leave this one and a few different styles for different types of vehicles linked down below along with a full instructional video on how to use this tool. Also, if you guys need step-by-step -step instructions with pictures and torque specs, I'll leave a shop repair manual site linked down below as well. These factory style workshop manuals are only about $20 and you can buy them now and the manual is yours forever and soon the site will be offering a subscription based system which means you don't have to download a big file to your computer and you can take your manual on the go so on your laptop cell phone or tablet i've used these for many different car makes but they have a manual for just about anything All right guys, we are rocking and rolling on mechanical repairs on the E55 wagon. I had to heat up and beat back this little ear of the subframe. The previous owner must have run something over, bent it down, and we weren't able to properly secure the underbelly panel, the plastic panel with a screw. So now I have a brand new clip and we are good to go there. As you guys saw, we replaced the thrust arm bushing. We have a new control arm bushing, a new sway bar end link as well. So pretty much everything on this side outside of an upper ball joint is complete. Uh, and I also replaced this thrust arm bushing on the right side. So the right side is gonna have a bunch of overlapping labor. We're doing the pads and rotors and we're also gonna replace this aromatic strut. As you can see, this one is new and the two in the rear are new. So this is our remaining original aromatic strut. And I'm not 100% sure what happened, but either a line blew off or there was an issue with that strut with the previous owner. But as you can see, it damaged the fender. So this car must have slammed to the ground at some point. Uh, so I just wanna get that out of there. That way each corner of the car is brand new. So of course we're gonna be doing uh, the bushings, the sway bar end links as well, and the upper ball joints and the brakes. And this is a great time to do it because we're just gonna rip all of this apart and replace it all. So without further ado, let's get to work.
Kind of a bummer, but this bottom pin was flattened out by whoever did the brakes last, and they kind of garbled up the paint on the caliper, but no big deal. I've soaked this end with PB Blaster. I'm pretty confident I'll be able to hammer this out, and then I'll just have to order a new pin. Now, something you guys may have noticed is that I left the brake pads, the old brake pads, in the caliper, and I put them over the brand new rotor, and the reason I did this is once you compress one of the pads, the piston on the other end is going to shoot out, so you need an old brake pad in here as a placeholder anyway so instead of taking them both out and then eventually having to put one back in so the piston doesn't come all the way out I just leave it all together we get the new rotor on and then you're essentially doing a pad slap which is really easy and this way you have an old pad to push that piston in and you're not touching the actual piston which can be damaged and this is a very expensive caliper and shout out to my friend Mike one of the best Mercedes technicians in the entire planet he taught me this trick like 10 or 12 years ago I saw him doing a brake job on an AMG car at the dealership and I'm like dude you forgot to replace the brake pads what are you thinking we must have been out really late last night and he's like no 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 let me show you this trick and I've been doing it this way ever since and it works out great so thanks Mike appreciate the tip and everybody say hi to Mike in the comment section The trick to doing the flex disc on these Mercedes is to loosen up the center support bearing right here. This gives you a ton of play. It's only two bolts, one here and one on the other side, and you get a ton of play now to install the new flex disc. If you don't do that, it will seem impossible to ever fit that in. No doubt there are a bunch of comments down below on how rusted these trans cooler lines are. I'm from Chicago, I'm no stranger to rust, so I've seen a lot of this, but I just wanna show you that I've never actually seen one of these leak. It's usually just surface rust, and you can clean it up pretty nicely, uh, as you can see down here. Now, to mint this all out uh, would require a ton of work, and maybe I'll do that one day, maybe I'll replace these lines if they're even still available, but for right now, do a little of that. All right, you get the idea. I could be here all day long. We have still this bracket right here that we can clean up. But in most cases, you can get the surface rust off, paint them, and you're good to go. So before the wagon arrived in Chicago, I had ordered a bunch of these parts and they told me I needed rear brakes. There was even a box with brand new Mercedes brake pads in the back, but I think they were referring to the front brakes. Those were totally shot and these look to be practically new. I measured them and they're almost indistinguishable from the new pads and rotors that I already bought, but that is okay. We'll save those for when they actually wear out. And here is our pile of parts. It doesn't look like much, uh, but 
at a shop or a dealership, this could easily add up to about $5,000 worth of work. Anything with air suspension and big AMG brakes, they charge you an arm and a leg for, but you can do this at home. And I have roughly uh, about $1,300 or $1,200 into all of this. So you figure if you do it at home, it, it could be 75, 80% less in some cases uh, to do this work yourself. And it is nuts and bolts. There are a lot of things in these cars that you can't do, but this kind of stuff, if you have some determination and some time, you can definitely knock it out. So let me show you uh, what a bad flex disc looks like. Uh, as you can see, it is cracking here. So this is starting to make our drive shaft and our whole drive line loose eventually these cracks will grow and this will start to wobble back there it could technically break and cause a bunch of damage if the drive shaft were to let go so you want to just inspect these every service these easily last like a hundred thousand miles or more uh, so it's not something you have to worry about all the time just something to take a look at when you're changing your oil maybe once a year or something like that uh, but something I wanted to point out it's probably already in the comment section realistically it always is when I work on suspension components and for good reason you want to leave the bushings loose so I have snugged these up but they're not totally tight the bolts for the bushing that's because you want to tighten them with the wheels on the car and the car on the ground if you don't it puts the bushings in kind of a twisted unnatural state and they will wear out much quicker uh, so in my case I will be lowering the car in probably two episodes from now uh, and then we will be getting an alignment you want to get an alignment if you're replacing all the bushings like I did um, and in that that case I'll probably loosen them back up and tighten them with uh, with the car at the proper ride height on the alignment rack uh, so shops will do that they might charge you a little bit more to go around and loosen everything and tighten it again but I do think it is worth it so as you can see we have our screw holding in our cover we're good to go there oh and I almost forgot I did have to cut this pin out as you guys saw and drill it out you don't want to hammer on this too much because you do risk breaking an ear of a really expensive caliper off. Uh, but we got the pin out, no problem. I had some extra ones laying around, but I think when I paint the caliper eventually, I'll just put some new brake hardware on here and call it a day. Normally, this doesn't happen. This is the first one I've ever had to cut out and Mercedes brake hardware is actually really robust. So this was a little bit of an oddball, but it's fixed and we're good to go. All right, so you wanna keep the cowl clean. So when you do a service on your Mercedes or any car really, you should inspect the cowl area for leaves, dirt, and debris. It can plug up drains. That can cause a ton of damage if water gets inside of the car and shorts out modules. Now, as far as all the other maintenance, all I did in this video was an oil change. It's all already been done. The brake fluid was done when the dealership fixed the SBC reservoir. The spark plugs were already done. The transmission fluid was already flushed out. I have all the receipts for the car, so we don't really have to worry about any of that. Just reset the cluster and outside of needing some fuel, we are in pretty good shape. Ooh, seven miles per gallon, not good. Not good, no messages. So we obviously plugged in the SBC pump. Uh, we didn't have any warnings or anything. As long as while that's unplugged, you're not opening and closing doors and waking up the system, you won't get any warnings. But even if you do, just turn the car off and start it a few times, it will clear up as long as that thing is plugged back in after your brake job. So let's go take the wagon out for a ride and see how nice the steering and the brakes feel. Nothing like taking your car out for its first ride after doing a bunch of work testing her out. Oh, God, I haven't driven this car in a little bit. Feels so good. Oh, the steering is phenomenal. It's super tight. I PDI'd these cars when they were brand new back in when they came out in 2003. And this just feels perfect. This feels absolutely perfect. I eyeballed the alignment actually pretty well. The steering wheel is just slightly off. Uh, but we definitely still need to get an alignment, especially uh, after she gets lowered brakes feel amazing and everything is good to go. I can't end the video without giving it a little bit of throttle. Oh, broke them loose, still spinning. <laughs> Dude, the wagon is wicked, guys. I don't know what it is about this thing. I mean, I know it's modded, but it is fast. It is really fast. If you guys caught 
the last video where I fixed everything on the R63, uh, this did zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds after just trying it twice. Uh, so anyway, loving this car. Everything seems to be in great working order. Uh, and we're ready to move on to some cosmetic modifications. Very excited for all of this. It's gonna start in the next video or maybe two videos where I'm disassembling a lot of this car uh, to send it out for paint. So with that being said, if you like this style of video, if you like a guy that's just fixing old cars in his garage, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed, share the video if you could. Uh, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I am going to drive the crap out of this car today. It's gorgeous out. Uh, and I will see all of you in the next video. More to go around and loosen everything and tighten it again, but I, and tight, and tighten it again. Now our first repair was already done. Now our first repair, and they'll even reimburse you if you had paid for this repair. Ah. Our first repair was actually done. Now our first repair was actually done by Merce. Now our first repair was actually done. And I'm not talking about recalls. They will for free on a 15. Our first repair. <clears throat>